Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm back with a look at the newest release from Open Journey. Uh, this one is special for multiple reasons. We are wrapping up the beautiful series that we've been working on through the last few months with Open Journey. She's been doing monthly kits all underneath that beautiful umbrella, and then each month is, you know, kind of spotlighting different things. Uh, this release we are, look, is going to be for Lent right? Um, it's titled Beautiful Darkness, but it's also Beautiful Lent. Uh, and she goes into kind of why she chose darkness for this one. I It spoke to me, let me tell you. That I just, these last few months, God has just been placing the perfect devotional content in front of me um, as I've been kind of working through all the things the last few months. And so this one, being Beautiful Darkness, couldn't have been an any better of a themed kit for me. And I'm really looking forward to um, walking through Lent this year. Uh, I have covered Lent over the last few years. I've shared kind of my perspective on it and information and resources. So you can go back on my channel if you just search Lindsay Decor Lent, um, or I'll try to, to link some videos down below. Um, I've done resources, things like that. It really just comes down to you doing the study and how you're convicted. I was not um, familiar with observing Lent um, up until a few years ago, and then I kind of dove down. Actually, it was... Um, uh, it was a combination of Ingrid and some other uh, companies at the time that kind of brought forth Lent, you know, into my face and, you know, prompted me to, to look and see why I hadn't been observing it um, before then. And so if you are somebody maybe that fell, falls into that boat as well, I would encourage you to dig in and look into it. Gotquestions.org is a great resource. I saw that um, Chris, he is uh, Christ is the Cure on Instagram. I'll try to link his tag down below or whatever. Uh, he had a post today, because I'm filming this today on Ash Wednesday, uh, kind of talking about, you know, commandment versus conviction and, um, you know, is it allowable if you are not of, you know, Catholic or Orthodox background um, to observe Lent and so really great discussions happening over there. And so I would encourage you guys to go look into that and engage in some of those conversations if this is something new to you. All that to say, it's no longer new to me and I'm super excited for Lent. It, I see it as a time for me. Um, I don't necessarily fast or things like that. I don't see it as like rules that I need to follow. Um, this is just a period of time very similar to Advent for me, uh, where I just kind of hunker down, do some, you know, intensive kind of focused studying during this time leading up to Easter. Uh, and especially right now, which is everything that's going on in my family. Um, for those of you who are following me on Instagram, you're all caught up, um, you know, as we're walking through this process with my son who has cancer. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to this next 40 days where I can just really really, really just snuggle on up to God because I need it. And so this kit is going to help me do that. Um, I am also excited because, like I said, this ends the beautiful series. So uh, after this kit, uh, Ingrid has some fun new different plans for the kits. I'm really excited for that. So stay tuned. Um, but this will be a good one to wrap up the series with. So like always, there are physical options. There's digital options because I know I am sharing this on Ash Wednesday. Wednesday. So Lent is starting. And so uh, there's no reason why you can't order physical products and jump right in when you get them. In fact, I would encourage you to do that. Um, Lent are just dates on the calendar or, you know, biblical dates, but you can spend time with God any time of the year. So you can do the Lent study any time in the year. Maybe you just have a chunk of time. You know that you really need to just, you know, have some focused study time for 40 days that would be the time to go through the study. So you can grab the physical kit, but there's also digital options. Um, when you order the physical kit, she does give you a discount code for 50% off of the digital option. So that might be a great option for you as well if you're wanting to just hop in you know, right away and start creating, but you also want physical product, you can go ahead and place your order. That physical product, she's really pretty quick about getting that sent out. Just know, uh, you guys, I, I can't explain to you just all the ways that God is working behind the scenes because um, we have like a private like chat group for those of us that are on the Open Journey team. And when I tell you like literally every one of us in the team is going through just hard right now, I, it's just, it's, 
overwhelming and frustrating, but at the same time, it's been beautiful for all of us to come together in that group and encourage each other and share all of our praises and prayer requests and the ways that God's working in our lives. And so I know the effort um, that went into releasing this release because Ingrid is dealing with some hard in her life as well with her kiddos and with medical things. And so uh, I just, I know what I'm dealing with and I couldn't even imagine putting out all of this beautiful content. I mean, it's solely God, right? I mean, we, we can only do it through through his strength and getting to see that through Ingrid has been so encouraging for me in my life. And so uh, just know that a lot of effort, a lot of love, a lot of prayer went into this release. And I, I just pray and hope that it will speak to many of you because I know through my DMs, there are many of you kind of going through the same thing right now. There's just, it's just difficult out there right now. And so I'm excited for this. So there's digital, there's physical, all that goodness. You can find that over on the website. I will have that linked down below. But let's dive in and start looking at things. Quit talking, right? <laughs> uh, since I'm only really doing videos like once a month, I feel like I get rusty in that month. And I just, I don't have the time to do additional videos right now. I'm sorry, you guys. We're, we're getting there. Okay, so this is the main devotional kit. Again, you do have physical option or digital option. Um, with the release of the beautiful release, Ingrid did uh, kind of of adjust the kits, scaled them back so they don't have quite as much within the devotional kit. Uh, and you'll see that reflected in the price. But then that allows you to kind of piece together things that make your own kit. So there's add-ons and things like that so that you can pick and choose what uh, works best for the way that you create. Um, there is a stamp set available as well. There was a couple stamp sets actually with this um, beautiful release. So there was um, this one from last month. And then this one from a few months ago, these all coordinate and of course coordinate with all of her other um, kits as well. So definitely take a look through the shop because you can kind of make your own kit, which is really, really nice. But the core of the kit, of course, is the devotional content. And let me just read from her card that usually ends up being the easiest way to do this. Let me see if she's, yes. Okay, so she says, this last kit in the beautiful series focuses on our Lenten journey, the darkness of Holy Saturday, of a possible dark night of the soul, although illuminated in the end by the beautiful light of the resurrection. The artwork that accompanies the devotional is a collection of mixed media art, and she goes on to... Uh, kind of explain the artwork that you see through here. She says the depictions of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane Gethen <laughs> or in the desert along with the desert landscapes helps us focus on the Lenten journey. Um, and then here you've got your hashtags to follow or post with as you are working through this series. So there is, of course, just the general um, beautiful hashtag, but then there is a Lent specific uh, hashtag as well. And so uh, this one felt more personal. And I don't know if it's just because I've been in communication with Ingrid behind the scenes. I know she's been working on the devotional content for years. These, these projects have been in the works for years. Um, but reading through this just felt more personal. Um, I don't know. You guys will have to let me know what you think when you read through it. I can just hear in her writing Again, I don't know if it's just because I know behind the scenes, but it's just, it's a hard, hard season right now. And so um, she talks about darkness and this darkness of um, Holy Saturday, you know, that time where Jesus is in the tomb and he's told everybody he's coming back, but, you know, they're just having to, to trust and faith and hope in that. And um, there is this, this unease that comes with that. And so uh, she just has some great, as always, examples. Um, of church history and, you know, biblical history, uh, life story, all of that in here as she is walking through the devotional content. Just really, really beautiful. Uh, and what I mean is when you start out here, you'll see there isn't as much scripture in the beginning. There is scripture here, but one thing I like to point out is that, you know, she bold prints everywhere where there is a scripture reference, and I, it's more, it feels like her heart here towards the beginning, and then she ramps up and you get your scripture in here. So don't feel like, you know, there isn't scripture in here. There certainly, certainly is um, plenty of scripture to work through, um, but it just, it feels personal. I mean, we are wrapping up this series also, so I'm sure there's a little bit of bittersweetness to that as well. Um, you know, and bittersweetness just in Lent in general. It's like you're leading up, you know, we're, we look at the story every single year of the torture and just 
awfulness that was done to Jesus. Um, and then that, you know, three days in the tomb and that uneasiness and then the glorious resurrection and you have that excitement. And so, um, I, I think that's kind of reflected as those of us that go through and, and recognize Lent also, there is that period of just unease or darkness, or you're kind of, you know, pulling back from the world a little bit. I know that's what I do. I tend to spend less time online, spend less time out in public, spend less time, just really, really spend time at home with my immediate family, hunkered down, doing studies and things like that. And so there's just this kind of like unease a little bit during the next 40 days. And then you hit Easter and then it's spring and it's just like all of this like excitement again, right? And so I don't know, that's just kind of how this season feels for me. And I kind of feel that through the way that this um, is written in the devotional content. So really, really great. Uh, if you have been working through Lent every year, I know like Advent, it can feel like it gets a little bit redundant, right? We kind of look at the same stories over and over and over. That is not the case with this devotional. I kind of went into it like, okay, like not, that sounds awful. Not okay. But like, okay, I know what's going to be in here. Um, but I didn't, I was very, very, uh, like happily surprised with the way that she wrote this devotional and some of the things that she points out. Uh, so it's a good one, guys. I'm never disappointed by Ingrid and her devotional content. So that is beautiful Lent. Uh, the study does have even some like reflection questions towards the beginning to kind of get you to think about it. Um, and then towards the end also, there is some reflection as well. Uh, and then it is just beautiful. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. It's been so neat to see how she has, you know, carried elements throughout the entire series, but then added in specific elements for each month's kits. She talks about olive press that is discussed in here, which actually I had just learned this little tidbit that she points out uh, off of a podcast recently. So then when I saw it in here, I was like, oh, yay. <laughs> I actually knew that for once. Um, for once, I knew something that Ingrid was teaching us before Ingrid taught it to me. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often. I learned quite a bit from Ingrid. So really, really great devotional content. content. Again, you do have the option to purchase that digital. If you just want to get it fast, jump right in. You do have that option, but I would encourage you uh, to grab the physical kit because it's stunning and gorgeous and gives you so many fun things um, to artistically create with while you are working through the study and the scripture. Maybe you're doing prayer journaling or things like that. Um, these are great. So uh, all of the items come in a nice little folder here. Even the folder itself can be, you know, turned into work artwork used for pieces. I could see using this as like a journal cover. Actually, that's really beautiful. I just love, love her artwork. So you've got several sheets of, uh, clear stickers and I'm kind of struggling. I am trying out, um, contacts for the second time in my life. I did not last the first time. This time's going a little better, but I've noticed in the afternoons, I'm at this like really fuzzy. So everything looks really fuzzy. So if I, if I say something is something and it's not right, it's not because I'm dumb. It's because I can't see. <laughs> Just so you know, <laughs> we'll see how this goes with contacts. But so you're getting four... I say full sheets, um, full sheets in that they are the full like traveler's notebook page size, essentially, um, of clear stickers. So these are translucent stickers. They are not pre-cut, but they're very easy for you to fussy cut around because they are that translucent sticker. They just look like they're melting right into your page. I love the images she has of Jesus in this one. She talks, you know, about darkness. Um, and so you can see that in the way that she has illustrated these. It's just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. So you've got, you know, a did like add on elements. You've got some main focal elements. Love these. I love layering elements like this behind um, die cut pieces. It just adds a little bit more dimension. So you've got those. Love these floors. I would love to see this in a stamp, Ingrid. <laughs> I really like this floral. It's really pretty. Um, here you've got some sketches and some painted in images. So lots of, you know, variety there. And then you have just some art mark pieces. So I always say that her artwork really inspires me to get messy with mixed media. Um, but you don't have to, if you don't have all the paints and materials, or if you don't like the mess of it, she includes plenty of pieces of artwork that give you that look of the mixed media without all of the mess. So you can kind of create your own backgrounds, Love that covenant there. I see these colors are giving me hints of that new color. I know we were talking about it. The uh, scorched timber. 
I know Ingrid said that she was working on it, uh, playing with it last month, and so I'm excited to see. I think it'll work with the color schemes of this month. So we love our Distress products in the mixed media world, right? They are so fun. These are beautiful. These, like, abstract scenes. These remind me of some past Lent years. So um, I did see in the shop that she has a whole Lent section. So maybe this particular year's kit isn't speaking to you for whatever reason. She does have her past kits listed as well if they're in stock, physical. Um, she always has the digital in stock. So you can kind of peruse and pick the older ones too if, if something like that, you know, catches your eye better. But these are just beautiful and I have been playing around with some gouache um digitally and so this kind of has that same look as to what I've been working with so I'm excited to play around with these images they're just absolutely beautiful and I love seeing how she has continued like I said continued some of the imagery throughout the entire beautiful series like seeing certain art marks or certain colors that have been carried through the entire series so that if you had leftover pieces from those past months you can mix and match and use them um, with this kit. Okay, so now we're getting into the opaque sticker paper. So let me make sure I have all of them. Yes, okay. So these are opaque white sticker paper. So these aren't see-through. These are sized in that um, standard traveler's notebook size page as well. So this will cover an entire page up if you want it to. I am loving the florals this month, and I'm really not an orange girl. I don't typically like orange, but I really love how she's used it um, in this month's kit. I'm, I'm obsessed. And then you've got some little stamps that you can cut out. Now, these are not pre-cut for you. You will have to fussy cut those out. Um, but the nice thing about that is you can see maybe you have a postal stamp die that you want to die cut out with. You can. Um, and that will give you that, you know, postal edge. You could use decorative scissors to cut it out if you wanted to or just cut out squares. It does not have to be ruffly stamps but you've got some stamps and then you have some of those um tile pieces that are in the stamp set also so if you're really loving these this stamp set is a great stamp set to create um that look on your own and that is something that we can go with a lot of kits that isn't kit specific um creating patterns like that so you might want to check out that stamp set Okay, so that's all the stickers. These pieces are cardstock. So there are like full painted scenes. So that, I mean, you can just do as a tip in directly into your Bible. You could fussy cut pieces out of it if you wanted to. I use these as inserts in my deconstructed devotionals. So you guys have seen I am pulling my devotionals apart. I hole punch them and then put them into this binder. So the entire beautiful series is in this binder. Um, and then I can use those um, pages as like center pages. I'm trying to find right here. So here's one where I kind of tore it, cut it down. Um, but then that gives me a place to take notes as I work through the study right directly in the devotional. I get lots of questions about this binder. The binder is from Freckled Fawn. I'm not sure if she still has any in stock. It's a um, traveler's notebook binder. So it is sized specifically for that standard traveler's notebook size. So if it's available, I will link it down below. But um, that is one way that I use those main sheets. Um, you don't have to pull apart your devotional if you don't want to. Um, you could just as easily add like double-sided adhesive or a little bit of glue down in there um, and then stick that in and then you've got an extra page in your notebook if you wanted to do that. Or you could coil bind it. You can... Um, do the ring bindings. I mean, there's lots of different ways um, that you can work through these kits, but you've got that one. This one, absolutely beautiful. I love, love that. And this really all you need is like a title or type out the verse or something, and then you are good to go. Uh, here are some smaller images. So you could use it, you know, in its entirety as it is, or use these little squares. I'll probably tear apart the little squares and use them as inserts. Um, in my notebook. I'm trying to see, it looks like the camera's out of focus, but I think it's my contacts that are <laughs> out of focus. Bear with me, guys. All right, and then there's some mixed media backgrounds. So, um, but who do you say that I am? Mark 829. I love when she does these full sheet um, 
mixed media backgrounds, and I just got a sneak peek at a new product that will be coming down the road that is absolutely amazing that I think you guys will really love if you love things like this. So stay tuned. That's like top secret knowledge only you guys know about because <laughs> I just learned about it today. Um, here's this other one. What does Lent mean to you? I love that. Like just sit down, sit down. What does it mean to you? Not your preconceived notions, not what has been told to you, not what has been preached to you from the pulpit. Just what does it mean to you? Really sit and spend some time and think about it. Um, there's been lots of things over the years that I kind of went into with a thinking, actually, I just had a recent one. Um, and many may disagree with me, and that's totally fine. But for a long time, my husband and I were anti-Ken Ham. We were old earth, not young earth thinking. Um, and we were that way for years and years and years. Uh, we both come from a science background, and so it just made sense to us. Um old earth. But over the years and with lots of studying and time and consideration and prayer, um, we now lean more young earth. And so now we have to revisit Ken Ham. And if we think that, you know, I don't know, there may be other problematic things. I don't know. I don't need your opinion. We're working through this on our own. But that is just an example of just kind of revisiting things, looking at it from a different perspective. Um, I just really encourage people to do that. Not to question our faith at all. Let me just be very clear. This is not about deconstruction or anything like that because that is detrimental and not good for us. But we want to own our faith and own what we know, right? Not just, oh, I know this because it's been told to me. So that's why I encourage people to look into things, not because I want them to question their faith, but um, to, to own their faith, to have a better ownership of it. All right, all that to say, what does Lent mean to you? And then leaving behind on this journey. And so then you have that mixed media piece there. Some really, really beautiful pieces. So that is what comes in the devotional kit. Uh, and then there are plenty of add-ons for you to create with. So let's go ahead and move this to the side and get into the add-ons. I actually prefer like less fuss for Lent and Advent and things like that and just kind of spending more of my time focused on the study part. So I like that, you know, we're kind of sticking with the same stuff that we've seen each month. It makes it very easy. By now, if you've been working in these kits each month, you're probably in a little bit of a routine, right? You kind of have a set way that you like to use the product, you know, certain clustering that you like to do or tip-ins or whatever it might be. So by now, we should be pretty comfortable with that. And then we can spend all of our time um, on the study part and not fussing so much about the creative part, right? Okay, so we do have Polaroids this month. So there are large and small Polaroids. So you'll see images from throughout this month's kit. These are just blank white on the back. Love, love, love this. So I, I'll have to send Ingrid a picture. I just did a digital gouache piece for one of my classes of um like red rock canyon and it just reminds me of this mine was not nearly as detailed and beautiful as this is but <laughs> i tried really really beautiful love this i love this image and i like that she's added you know the distressing like we've seen so you don't have to get messy if you don't want to these ones are great because they can just be standalone pieces but backgrounds like this really give you space to write and to stamp and to do other things. And this is already kind of your background. So I might run this through my typewriter, type out a verse, write out a prayer, stamp out a title, something like that. Whereas this ends up being more like a private prayer spot. So I might put like some washi tape here, create a tip in where then I've got this image that's on my page. It's really beautiful to look at. But then when you flip it over, that is where I would have like my prayer journaling or my note taking or word study, whatever it is that I did for that that day. Love that. I love that there's a mix of like really harsh, you know, darkness, but then these light, pretty soft pieces. Beautiful. The olives. Love that one. And then you've got some blank ones. So then you can do whatever you want on those. I really love these also. So maybe you want to play around, recreate one of the other images that you see. Um, you can do that for sure. Okay. And then the smaller ones are basically the smaller, they're the same thing. They're just smaller um, image, you know, smaller scale. That one's different. So there are the Polaroids. All right. Next up we have the tickets. 
trying to outrun the migraine that I can feel coming on because of my contacts. So bear, bear with me. Okay, tickets. These are awesome. I use them a couple of times. And here's where I used a Polaroid. Okay, so here's an example of one of the tickets that I put in here. So you can see I fussy cut out around the red border that's on here. Um, and then now it's just a little spot that I can do some note taking uh, in here. But you can use them as layering elements also. I think the largest die in the Tim Holtz ticket die uh, works with these, fits on this. Um, I also have used this multi-hole punch. This is definitely an investment for sure, but I have used it every time that I'm in my office. I use it at least once. I'm not in my office as much as I'd like to lately, but I do use it. Actually, I used it right before I turned the camera on. Um, so this is nice because then I can hole punch like the little half circles in there um, and then give it like a scalloped edge or they have decorative scissors. I mean, there's different ways if you wanted to add that decorative detail, but you don't, you don't need to. Um, these are cardstock. They're an uncoated cardstock. So you can stamp on these, create on them, um, and they're not going to resist the things that you put on there. So really, really beautiful, like collaged mixed media pieces. And something like this could be, you know, a title or a phrase or something there and then give you a private journaling spot. These give you some room to do some journaling on. Um, you could take them into pockets. They're great for that. So they're just, they're just good for having additional spots to do some journaling and it's not just a boring square of paper. <laughs> so I like to have some fun things in my Bible and in my uh, binder there that I'm working on. Okay, next up we have the die cuts. And I never know how to cut this off because I always want to save this little piece. I'll do that. And then that way I can use this as an embellishment if I want to. Okay, so here are the die cut add-ons. So the die cuts do not come in the devotional kit. They're a separate add-on. Oh, these are probably my favorite set of die cuts that she has done in this series because I love the florals Ugh. and the doves. These are amazing. Okay, and then you've got, so the same imagery that we have seen, right, through the other elements, now you've got die cut pieces. So you can just kind of pick and choose what you want to use. I like to mix and match, like I said, these with the stickers. Maybe I wanna create my own crazy mixed media background and then, you know, have an element on there. Um, these are also are good sizes to fit on the Polaroids themselves. So if you wanted to create kind of how I do my, um, Word Study Wednesday cards, you could do that on the Polaroids as well. But there is a look at the die cuts. Lots of lots of beautiful florals. And again, you can mix and match with um, past kits as well. I just throw everything in a little container together and then I just kind of rifle through there <laughs> trying to find what I think will work for the cluster that I'm creating. And it all just is cohesive because it's all Ingrid's art since she's not you know, buying licensed art from other artists. She is the artist. Everything, you know, matches really well. So there are the beautiful Lent die cuts. And then last but not least, we have the daily readings. So in here, this will be like a little kind of mini kit of sorts, I would say. So if you're looking for a daily project, because the devotional kit is not structured in a day one, day two, day three, day four type format. It is just a read straight through. It is kind of sectioned into larger chunked sections, but it's not a daily project. So if you're looking for a daily like scripture reading, scripture writing, memorization, journaling project, um, this daily readings kit would be good for you. So there's a folder with the Lent readings. So for each day, I do love that she put the date that is a detail that is very important to me because I have done lots of Lent studies that are like day one, day two, day three. And I know that they do that because some people do things on the Sundays. Some people don't do anything on the Sundays. I know especially for Advent, you know, some people start before December. Somebody, Some people wait only until December 1st. So by doing day one, that gives some flexibility. But for me, who can't always do daily projects, by day like five, I'm not sure what day it is, <laughs> what I'm supposed to be doing. So with the dates, then you can stay on track with the calendar. But if you're picking this up in the future, 
future you, hello. <laughs> if you're picking this up down the road and the dates don't line up with that particular year's Lent, that doesn't matter. Then you can just go do day one, day two, day, day, day three, and it'll be totally fine. So for each day, she has like a phrase. So be reconciled, but to serve, give me a drink. And then she's got a set of scriptures. And it looks like from what I can see blurrily, I think also my blood pressure is very high with everything going on. That's a whole nother thing. Um, it's all New Testament. Yes. So this is all New Testament. And then she even marks out Holy Week, which is really nice. So you could maybe you want to do something specific or different um, for that week. So you've got those daily scriptures on there. And then it also comes with a ton of amazing stickers. So this can be used in addition to the devotional uh, kit also, if you're just wanting additional ephemera pieces. So there are the circle stickers. So these are cut circle format. These are great, especially with the daily reading, because then you can just do it kind of like a bullet point. Maybe you want to write out the verse. Um, these are awesome for using, like if you're working in a growth book or a fringe journal or, you know, some kind of notebook like that. Um, these are great. You've got some word fetty. Now this is not pre-cut, which I appreciate this detail. We've talked about this before. Uh, I think this is sticker paper. Uh, yes, these are stickers. Um, but by not having them pre-cut, you can tear it. So what I like to do is I have, I mean, any ruler works, but I especially like this one from Tim Holtz. I've actually bought two of them. I have one for school and one for home. Um, there's like this, this edge has like a slope to it. And then there's a metal edge that you can use with, um, like exacto knives and things like that. But I like this edge especially because it just does a good job of laying flat to the table. And then I just hold it and I would pull this and tear it along that straight edge. And then that way I would get kind of a rough, torn, more organic looking edge than if I just cut it. Not that there's anything wrong with cutting it, but I just like that torn look. So you can do that with these. Uh, Jesus saw him. Uh, is it a whole? My father is always working and so am I. Moses wrote about me. So plenty of phrases probably from the scripture that we will be doing uh, throughout Lent. And I like that it's on this mixed media background. So it's just everything is cohesive and I don't have to do anything to it. So, so, so nice for the season of life. If I do not have to get messy and do extra steps, I'm here for it. So I don't have to age paper. It's already aged for me. Uh, here are some tile, like mosaic tile stickers. These are pre-cut into squares for you. Nice. You can create your own background super, super quickly with these. So you get two of the full sheets and then a half sheet. Uh, oh, there is a half sheet of Word Fetty. This looks more like um, titles. And then these are phrases. You've got uh, stamps. These are pre-cut um, just as rectangles for you. So more of those stamp images. So some of the things that we have seen from this kit, maybe some past kits, um, new things maybe that weren't in the devotional artwork. So lots and lots of variety. These are not actual stamps. So don't, don't put these on a letter and try to send it. It won't go anywhere. Um, but love the look. I've used them tons throughout my projects. They're just fun little embellishments. And then some more word fetty that's just words um, alone. These are sticker. Yes, these are sticker. And again, on that mixed media background. So you've got sacred moment, Lent, daily cross, lots of prayers. So if you want to indicate that something specific is a prayer, maybe you're praying for somebody specific all oppressed, dark nights. So some of the key kind of elements that we look at in the devotional content, and I'm sure in the scriptures as well, this kind of acts like it's pre-cut. Yes, these are pre-cut into rectangles for you. So there is that. So those are all the little sticker goodness that comes in the daily readings Lent like mini kit is probably what she's going to call it if I know Ingrid. Okay, so there's a look at the beautiful Lent 
release. Everything will be linked down below for you guys. There's physical, there's digital. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below for me. Um, check out that description box for all the links. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.